All right, so the design requirements is, so let's talk about the deployment site. What kind of deployment site will you select? Multi-site. Multi-site okay. centralized or multi-site distributed? Distributed. distributed. Uh, well, okay. Centralized. Multi-site centralized? We can't put the latency between Chicago and Baltimore too. Just okay, so first of all, multi-site centralized is what? When you have all the call measure servers located in the head office, right? Right. And the branch office use the WAN to register the call manager. Right. Now the problem is there is a restriction on the milliseconds. So in that case, multi-site centralized may not work if the servers are located in Baltimore. What's that? What are we using for Baltimore to Chicago? What's the, the Baltimore to Chicago? The response time is 89, 89, 89, 89 milliseconds. Right. So the re requirement is to receive uh, that it must have 80 milliseconds or less. Right. Now, there is nothing wrong of putting mix and match uh, deployment model. So Baltimore, you can put its own cluster, and Chicago can have its own cluster. Right. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. The reason why you need a Chicago in your own cluster because of the response time. Right. So in here, we will select multi-site with centralized. Right. Right. Now, what about the Springfield? That's uh, that one actually. You only got a, you got 1,500 users. You can use uh, over the LAN also. Okay, that that's doable because both of them has 10 megabit pipes. So I'm assuming that the response time is not going to be more than 50 milliseconds. The same, pretty much close to the city, right? Mm -hmm. How many users I put servers there? Right, right. So you would put the publisher here and right. subscriber here, and you may want to put a local subscriber here. Right. That's exactly so it. it's still considered to be centralized, right? Because this server part of the belong the sub, sub, the server in Springfield belongs to the cluster in Chicago. Right. Mm -hmm. Now this is a doable. Now why you would put a server here so that all the keep alive between the phones does not cross the WAN. Right. The only time it needs to cross the WAN is a when the ser uh, these phones register to the call manager here due to the failover, or when they're calling. Someone in Chicago. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, so that would be that would be uh, multi site with centralized. Call multi site with centralized call processing. Now, what about Baltimore? What would you do there? Well, Baltimore, you can put their own cluster. Also. You have your own cluster with one pub, one sub, right? right. One pub and sub. All right. What about she, uh, Mexico? Mexico, you can put SRST just a, storm, a stand alone the router. SRST or Call Magic Express? Uh, I mean, Call Magic Express. Call Magic Express. The reason why you don't want to put a server there is because of the bandwidth is only 512k. Plus there's not enough user in there. Okay, and it's not enough user to justify a full call manager. So it makes sense to put Mexico as a uh, call manager express, but how do you connect Mexico to the head office? Right, through what? Right. Well, that's a routing, but what kind of uh, line would you prefer to use? T1, maybe a SIP trunk, maybe SU23. Uh, like you, you have to have a mechanism for Mexico phone to dial the head office phone in Chicago or Baltimore, right? In Interlink trunks. So some sort of trunk has to be there. Right. Just piggyback it on the Chicago. You want to piggyback on the Chicago? So 200 users. On a 512k link, remember the keep alive is going to keep alive will come keep coming in every 30 seconds. Yeah. Right? And the link link is shared, it's not just dedicated for voice. Is also shared by data, right? Uh, so it may, okay, I mean, you can, like I said, nothing wrong with it, but you have to look at the distance between Chicago and Mexico. That could be a factor as well, right? But you put in 50 milliseconds of latency, so it's pretty, it's 50. not very many hops. Okay, so, all right, so I mean, that's possible, absolutely. But what would be, what would be your own suggestion? I would probably go with Call Magic Express. That's what I would do. Simply because A is a different, uh, uh, a corner of the world, I mean, uh, network, and it, it, two, you have only limited number of phone. The bandwidth is going to be an issue, and they you know there's all. Don't forget, if this link goes down for a day or two, all these users will be down for a day or two. Mm, good point. Yeah. Right. So, if, but if they had a Comage Express, at least they will be talking to themselves. Yeah. So, from that perspective, it makes sense to put a Comage Express here. Now, what about the server model on Chicago? No, wait, before you go to server model, what if they were going, if, if you're connecting from Mexico to Chicago, you talk about 
C1 line, Citroën. Well, yeah, the trunk between the Mexico router, Colmet Express, to the call manager should be either via SIP trunk or H323 trunk. Okay. There has to be some sort of logical connection between them, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. In Chicago, what? how many servers do you need to support 8,700 users? Well, you actually need three. Okay. One for, well, the only, the only is it's 7,500 each can support. And Depending on what model, though. Well, I'm using MTSC 7845. The 7845 can support 7,500 model. Right. So 7,500 users. Right. Yeah. So why do we need a three? Exactly. You need two. Three wouldn't be enough. No, no three would be two is more than enough, actually. Well, I'm a, actually, you can use a two, actually, so you can fail over. Yeah. An optimal des a, a budget design would be two. Two. Right? With the budget, if, you, if your budget is tight. Right. But if the budget is a little bit relaxed, well, I can't say these days now, but <laughs> you, want, you want to select true three servers. So you have a publisher, one subscriber, and subscriber two. Right. Now, this subscriber can handle 7,500 phone. This subscriber can handle 7,000 phone, so 500 phone. Mm -hmm. Now, what a, don't forget, you have another site, Springfield. What about that? Well, that side you can actually put one subscriber and then... Uh, so now you need more than three then? Yeah, but you can, yeah, so that's what I'm Well, publisher is not doing call processing anyway. Well, so you're actually, it, 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 there's no hardcore restriction, you cannot. Yeah, but it, it, the good not. design, they usually said don't. So why not, you, you got two of them here, so you can back the Chicago one, with probably to the that one also. Okay, so you're saying that put one of these server in Springfield? No, no, uh, Springfield can have its own server. Okay, so Springfield have its own server, so technically this cluster you have four servers. Right. Agreed? Right. But you need two in Springfield for redundancy. Yeah, well, yeah, well, you what? could have this server as a primary and use one of these servers as a backup. That, that's what I was doing. But then you're pushing it. But remember, the so backup is the worst case scenario, right? That's, yeah. I mean, if your server is goes down for like a couple of days and you have a serious problem. Right. Okay. Uh, how do you distribute the users? 7,800 users. Do you put all of them in the same server? Well, you cannot you put 7,800 anyway. You can you put can, so you split that. Yes. To split this number of users into half, how do you? How many groups do you need to create? Two groups. Minimum two. So one for group A connects to server one. One for group B connects to server two. Right. Right. Now, what about the backup? Just add the uh, publishers to the backup. So now, groups. now you're going to run call as a processing and publisher because in the case of this publish su subscriber goes down. You want to use this publisher as a backup because you can't use the subscriber as a backup because he won't be able to handle the load. Yeah. Agree? So you have to use publisher as a backup, which is not the best design, but in a tight budget, you could do that. Could, you could do that. Both subscriber can point to publisher as a backup. backup. You just have to make sure that both of these servers doesn't go down at any given time, or you'll be, you said, or you'll be looking for a new job. You said in a tight budget, the publisher will be the backup. In, 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 yeah, if the budget is tight, you could use the publisher as a call processing device. If the budget is not tight, then you, 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 you have a budget to buy servers, feel free, right? Okay, this one is Only solves all problems. Now, what about how many licenses do I need now? For the server, mm -hmm. node license. Well, you, uh, how Total many? or just for Chicago? Total node license, for Chicago only. Three. Three. Sure about that? No, actually two, uh, yeah, one, two, three. Well, no, because the Springfield is technically part of the, the Chicago group. So Springfield is part of the, the whole cluster. Right. So how many node licenses do you need now? Four. Four. Why do you have four? Because call manager is also doing processing. Okay. Oh, yeah, call manager does processing. Even though it's not active, yeah. it's a standby, right? Yeah. All right. What about Baltimore? Well, Baltimore, you can probably put uh, um, two of them, actually. So, two 4835. So one publisher or one subscriber should be good enough yeah. in this current economy? Yeah, okay. definitely. So what kind of model? 78? 75. Okay, so very tight room to grow, right? Right. All right. But what about the VPN, uh, VPN user? Do you want to be concerned about that from the server perspective? It's only 25. It's only 25, so they will be registered to these servers anyway, right? Right. Okay, cool. Now, let's talk about Baltimore at this moment. If I look at the Baltimore, how many region do I need to, what kind of product can I select? Well, within the Baltimore, you can probably create, a, a, I mean, within within Baltimore, you can do 7-Eleven. 
Right. So the when the calls are being made between these phones, right. I use G711. Right. But what are the VPN users? You said a separate region with a lower code. Ah. The VPN user who might be coming from different speed, you want to use? A lower code. A, a, a lower codec, yeah. G729 would be a preferred choice. Right. So how do I make sure that the VPN user is using G729? Because you have separate, 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 separate what? Region. Uh, 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 region. Region. Region, and then if separate uh, double. Device pool. Device pool. Right. So you need to create a separate region. Now, so there is technically no restriction of creating many device pool for the same site. You can create as many device pools you want for the same site. But you really need to understand why the device pool are being used. Right. In this case, we're using two device pools for why. Why? One is to serve the head office internal network. And one, one is to serve the head office remote network. Make sense? So a lot of people, what happens is they don't, they don't understand that device pool can be, multiple device pool can exist for the same particular site. Okay? There's nothing wrong with it. You can call it a Baltimore, Balti, Baltimore device pool one, Baltimore device pool two, whatever you want. All right. Uh, so we're going to see group is done. How many group would I create in, uh, in Baltimore? Two. Two. Why? VPN and For the registration. Oh, oh, server group. I'm sorry. Server group. Server. The, Just one. The VPN call manager group. Just one? Just one. So one, call, one group because you only have two servers, right? Yeah. Even these guys are registering to those two servers. So one of them will be primary, one will be standby. Now, what about Mexico? Um, Mexico, we Mexico is common express, pretty straightforward, right? Location, region. Location is like restricting how many calls in one particular site, right? So that's pretty much it. So this has been, re I mean, based on this topology, you had a, a rough idea about in terms of the model even you can select now. So you, this will give you an idea how to use uh, the different models Cisco has for unified communication with the different type of environment that you're going to design. Also, when to select what codec. So when you're designing this or working with the design team, you need to pay attention to all this criteria. Okay? So, so you have a question? Yeah, go ahead. Look, wait, wait, when you finish, I'll ask my question. No, go ahead. So for Chicago, you said we need four groups. I don't understand. Chicago, you need... Chicago Four servers. Three. You need how many groups? Two. No, three. Three. One for one for group one, one for group two, and one for Springfield. So we need three groups for Chicago and Springfield. Right. Well, remember, this is one cluster. Yeah. All the servers in Chicago. Yes. So these two servers has been split into two groups, right, to support half of the users. Yes. So group one points to this server. Group two points to this server as a primary call manager. Yeah. Agree? Is that group or device pool? Well, group. Because group will decide who is the primary call manager, who is the standby call manager. Mm -hmm. How you assign the group to the phone is through device pool. Okay. 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 So, so go ahead. Now, and then you need one group for Springfield to tell the Springfield phone to register to this server. Okay. Okay? okay well, With publisher as a standby. So is it that four groups? Because you have one that's the first subscriber, the second subscriber, and then the one in Springfield, the third one. That's three groups. Three groups. What about the publisher? Publisher is a standby on all these groups. Okay, so making it three. Yeah, making it making three. three. So for Baltimore now, uh, first of all, we're dividing the number of... Um, no, Baltimore, you're not dividing anything. With Baltimore, you only 2,300 users. Oh, okay. So, we need so all of them goes to the same group. Yeah, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. so, like I said, this is a, a very good uh, way of understanding when to use device pool, when to use uh, groups, and how you want to play with them. So a lot of people, what happen is when they do CCMP voice, they, do not, they, they know how to configure region, how to configure device pool, but how you really use them. That you really have to understand the design. Okay? And I would strongly suggest that if you go to Cisco SRND guide, uh, www.cisco.com slash go slash srnd download the design guide that they have and it's a very good tool it's a very boring uh, book to read it's a free of charge and read them because that will he help you understand how to use this element in different scenarios okay 
Alright, so we're going to start with the, today's lecture on voice gateways.